Hello dental online trainers and welcome to our course, the Class 2 Direct Resin Technique. I have a strong affinity to the Class 2 Direct Resin Composite Technique uh, because when, when I was younger, when I was a younger dentist, and I'd be working on a posterior composite, unless it was gonna be a Class 1 composite, and as I took out the old restoration, or say to take out the decay, and all of a sudden I might see the decay is encroaching into the proximal, into the, and turning into a class two composite, I would start to get stressed out. And as I'm taking out that decay, I'd be like, please don't turn into a class two. Please don't go into the proximal. Because I found it so complicated, and I was so, it was so unpredictable for me to be able to do those class twos so I would have a great contact when I was done. But now that I've developed the technique and I've been able to really create this, uh, this great contact over and over predictably, I found that now I have no issue at all if I'm working on posterior tooth and it starts turning into a class two. A technique that I use in my practice quite a bit now is what we refer to as a selective etch technique. That is, I'm gonna take the advantage of using phosphoric on enamel, but then I'm gonna use self-etch its system on the dentin. Now the nice thing about enamel is that minimally you want to etch it for 15 seconds. That is if the enamel has been prepared. But if you have unprepared enamel, it's important to etch it longer. So you want to etch it for 30 seconds or even longer. You want to rinse off your etching and dry it completely. So if you're an experienced clinician back in the day, you remember when we used to etch the teeth, we would rinse off the phosphoric acid and then we would dry it and you would see this frosty appearance on the enamel. Well, that's exactly what we want. All right, let's get into the class two technique. So I'm showing you an upper bicuspid with a failing class two amalgam. One of my tips that I have for you before you start the restoration is to actually check the patient's occlusion. I'll mark it with articulate paper like what I show on this slide. Now what I used to do when I was uh, less experienced, I would actually take a photo of this with my intraoral camera. And I would put this image up in front of me so that when I was starting to contour my composite, I would know where my contacts were before I started and that would help me develop the proper contour when I was working on my composites. So go ahead and check your occlusion before you start. The second thing it will do is that if, especially when you're working in the, in the distal areas, like on a second molar, very often on the lower second molar, if there's a restoration in that tooth, the upper cusp, the, up, the palatal cusp of the upper second molar will wear down the occlusal surface of your lower restoration. And instead of having natural anatomy to that restoration, the restoration will be sort of saucer shaped. Now, if you don't recognize that when you start out, and you try to build a very natural looking morphology to that restoration, and you have a super erupted uh, maxillary molar, when the patient goes to bite down, they're gonna have a high, they're gonna be high in that area. And then you're gonna have to start grinding away or adjusting all that beautiful anatomy that you built into the, into the tooth. We've just converted our class two composite into a class one composite. So if you've taken the class one composite course, you already know how uncomplicated the technique is and what great beautiful results we get. But we'll review that with you now. Now, commonly in the mouth, if I find that this matrix band is in my way for instrumentation, then I will take out the matrix band, but leave in the wedge. I don't want to take out the wedge because then the gum tissue is going to start bleeding if I take out the wedge. In this case, the matrix band's not in my way. I'm gonna just leave the matrix band as it is. I'm gonna start building up the occlusal portion of the teeth, doing one, one increment at a time. Again, doing an oblique layering technique as we described to minimize the stresses as the composite cures. Starting at a 45 degree angle, injecting the composite using the tooth to cleave off the excess composite. I'm gonna set my syringe back into the warmer. So I'm gonna use the small end of the multi-purpose instrument. Blending the composite onto the cusp 